Okay guys, welcome to our next Android tutorial. This episode is going to cover layouts, our basic layouts. So there's lots of types of layout. There's a grid layout. I've never used that personally. Linear layout, vertical, linear layout, horizontal. So in layout, you, you build a layout and or you, you pick one of these layouts or you can define your own as well, but that's really quite difficult. I haven't done that yet myself. And then in a layout, in a linear layer, for example, all the child views are arranged underneath one another. Just dot, dot, down, 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 down. A linear layer horizontal, they're arranged across, left to right. Relative layout, the layouts are all organized relative to each other's positions. So what that means is that you can have a layout, say, put this layout in the top left corner, put this layout in the bottom right corner, put, put a layout, a thing in each corner. You can arrange the children relative to each other. These can get very temperamental and funky, particularly when you get over about 10 views, they get a little crazy. Now a frame layout essentially means one the child view. It can only have one thing in it at once. However, a frame layout is incredibly handy for doing, doing things such as um, if you want to add a fragment, depending on certain things in the application. A fragment is a chunk of UI. We'll get into that in a, a, later, tutorial, a later video. But if you, let's say, want to add a fragment to a video or add a fragment to an app, you'd insert it into a frame layer or you want to add a picture, depending on certain things, you know, if, if, if this, add that picture. We'll cover that. Um, a table layout is very handy because it allows you to organize things into a table, essentially, without borders. Table layouts can be a little bit confusing, particularly with columns. These are great for organizing grids. A table row... <coughs> is essentially a row for a table. You can organize multiple things and split the row evenly. And it's just space. So now see up here we have linear layout and then in this we have a text view called text view one and we have a button called button one. Okay? Now we want those images to appear in the center across this in the center across. So we want to change its gravity to center horizontal. And done. So we'll just save that. That puts them there. Now we'll get into more advanced stuff when it comes to it because you can do weights, proportions, and stuff like that. But we're going to keep stick with basic stuff. So we're going to give this text view what's called an ID. Edit ID. I'm going to call this text view. Okay. And then we're going to call this our button. Okay, now this is telling me there's an, a problem here. So if we bring this up, hard call button should use an at string resource. So we need to create a string to call this button. So we're going to click add, create a new string. Now our name for our string is what, what the string is known as to the Android system. This is the string's ID. So we're going to call it button. string okay and its value is going to be press me press me and if we save that if we look in the XML we can just we could also you know very simply copy and paste this and add another string so if we call this but string come on, I'm actually going to build another string here it's actually going to be called hello an idea Android we don't want to have capital letters that causes all kinds of havoc could to change this back to hello world and this here is going to be called hello Android I'm bad at typing by the way you probably guess I make lots of typos okay so we want to go edit text and we want to set this to button string so here it says press me and we can define our own button in another episode. So that's what it's going to be called. And this here is our hello world. Fair enough. String. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make that button do something on click. When it's clicked, okay? We, now there's a couple of different ways of controlling a click. We're going to show you first the foolproof, full code method that always works regardless. Then we're going to show you a trick. So we want to go back to the corresponding activity. 
and in this on create now that button is in our layout but how do we find that button you see we need to know how to find the button in our code so that we're going to create a variable called button okay and we're going to call it my button button equals and this is going to be of button type but how do we how do we how do we know which how does android uh, or how's the code going to know or android going to know what button we're talking about it could be any button it could be the home button it could be the settings button it could be the button for number one so what we have to do is we have to find a view by the id that we gave it so if we type in find view by id in brackets then or dot id dot our button comes up now as you can see here we need to import button now we now have a variable button that that is our button on the layout so this button here is now linked to this button variable in the layout itself that's nice now this id system allows you to have multiple buttons and have them do multiple things so we want this button to do something when it's clicked now what we're actually going to make it do is we're going to make it change the text so how do we make it how do we make a button click? Well, how do we make it detect a click? Well, we want to set some kind of thing that uh, a section of code that will execute when you click it, don't you? So ideal order. So we're going to say my button dot, and we're going to set on click listener. Okay. Then we're going to then we're going to create a new instance of on click. I S T E N E R on click listener. And we're gonna get rid of that M that I accidentally pressed in. Okay. So that looks good. Bit of a problem. We're gonna import on click listener. And it's gonna give us an error. And it should give us an error. New on click listener. Hmm, what's, what's going on now? Give me a second. Okay guys, so I figured out what the issue was. Um, when you put the new on click listener in, you have to put brackets in. I'll actually show you what I did. So it was like this, and then I put you put in a bracket, like so, and you put in the other curly bracket. And then you have to add an unimplemented method, which is public void on click. I think that's what it is. It'll tell me now. Oh, on click view v. Whoops. And I usually use the add on unimplemented methods. So whenever the button is clicked, it will execute the code in the onClick method. So we want to change the text on our screen to hello Android and then when you press it it changes back to hello world. So you keep pressing it, it does that. So the text view, so we're going to do create, we're going to get a reference to our text view here. Text view text equals text Oh my god I'm text view find view by id dot id dot text view and it comes up and then control shift o is auto sort imports on this so on click what we're going to do is we're going to get the text we're going to say text or string uh, text Hmm. Yeah, string text view text or string text view it's called text view I'll tell you what we'll do we'll call that text view and we'll call this text makes it easier string text equals text view dot get text dot to string so that returns that as a string 
Now, this is saying we have to change our modifier to final. So that's what we'll do. Okay. So that's fair enough. Now we have a vi an, an instance of a text view called text view reference that is linked to our text view in our app. So I'm going to say if text dot contains and we'll put in our string. So one string is going to contain Android, one string is going to contain, contain world. So if contains world. Now I need to make sure it's dot contains ignore case. So I'm just put space in. Okay, so we'll just we'll just say dot contain and see what happens when we run it. So if it contains world text view dot set text. Now we want to get our string. We want to get our actual text itself. Yeah, but we'll, we'll set it manually. Okay, so say hello Android. Okay. So if it contains word, we said a hello Android, and then else text view dot set text hello world. Okay, so when we click the button, it should do that. So we're going to click save. And then we're going to run it on our emulator. So run, and it should come up on the emulator now in a minute or two. The console should be telling us how far it's going. This is our log cast. We're going to show you how that works in the next episode. So our, our team's up. So if I press press me. Hmm. So clearly I've made some sort of elementary error. I bet you that's case sensitive. So we'll just wait for it to reinstall the app. And when you have a phone or something connected up, it'll automatically install to the phone like the emulator, which makes this incredibly handy for testing. So hello world, press me. Hello Android. See? So that button is now controlling that text. So that's how you control a button in a layout. Now we're going to build a more elaborate layout uh, in the future. So that's been your fourth Android tutorial.